Hi, and welcome to this week's Fade to Black. On today's show, we're going to be taking a look at social justice filmmaking, reviewing Danish and Norwegian films, Armadillo and Troll Hunter, and I get to eat a hamburger. So good. Is this yours? It's really good. Good burger. <laughs> <laughs> My burger. We went to McGill University for a screening and discussion on social justice filmmaking. Have a look. Hey, this is Alex with uh, CUTV. We are here with filmmaker Amar Walla and his producer Noah Bingham. Um, you guys are currently uh, in production on your new film, The Secret Trial 5. Um, thanks for talking to us uh, this evening. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Um, before we get into the interesting way you're funding your project, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about the film itself. Sure. Um, Secret Trial 5, a bit of a cryptic name. Uh, can you just tell us exactly uh, or a bit about what the film is about? Sure. So the Secret Trial 5 is a documentary that we're currently making about five men five Arab Muslim men who were held in Canada on a device called a security certificate over about the last ten years or so. Now the interesting thing about these five men and their cases is that they spent nearly thirty years in jail combined and none of them was ever charged with a crime. Um, the evidence against them was kept entirely secret and they've all faced at certain times deportation to countries that had, are known to torture terror suspects. So it's very important for people to note that um, none of these men uh, though they are accused terrorists, has ever been accused of a crime. And they've been held in almost like a Guantanamo-like prison here in Canada, which is something probably most Canadians don't know about. Ahmed Trambiul. Tell him to think about that, Ahmed. Ahmed Khabarni Trambiul. You tell him to think about what would happen if he were taken away. Ask him if he's willing to pay that price. And ask yourself, Ahmed, are you willing to let him pay that price? Ahmed, I can't in me. You have to convince him, Ahmed. No! You have to do it for the sake of your family. No! What I said to Amar today is that often history is written by the vainqueurs. And the vainqueurs, malheureusement, are often the states and corporations, the multinationals, the companies that les appuient, who benefit from the war, from the gains effectués by the les puissants de ce monde. Et j'ai l'impression, un an et demi après le, avoir coupé ce bracelet de la honte, que l'histoire des certificats de sécurité est en train de s'écrire par le SCRS, par les médias, qui d'une certaine façon sont endoctrinés par le gouvernement canadien. Can you tell us exactly or more about what a certi uh, security certificate is? A uh, security certificate is a piece of immigration le legislation that has existed for about 30 years or so. But in the 90s, it got transferred to sort of like a, an anti-terrorism legislation, which is really interesting when you think about it. I mean, why would you try, uh, you know, uh, prospective terrorists under immigration legislation? Terrorism is sort of the ultimate form of criminality in today's society. We we try terrorists in criminal courts every day in this country, so why the exception in these five cases? Um, and so a security certificate allows the government to hold someone indefinitely without charge uh, while withholding evidence under grounds of national security. So essentially you could be in jail not knowing why you're in jail. Um, they tell you that you know they have certain evidence against you which they never ever reveal to you or your lawyer and you and your family just kind of has to sit there and take it. So these five families have been dealing with it, like we said, for a combined 30 years now. Perhaps like Sophie was telling in this uh, testimony, when you are living in jail in your own home, when you are visited by police states and border agency entering your house anytime without warrant, checking you, asking questions, respect you have to respect curfew, you cannot leave the city. Wearing these bracelets in your body, feeling the, un in the injustice in your own body, feeling, uh, sentir un objet 
étrange qui ne fait pas partie de ton corps qui est là pour te rappeler que l'État est watching. Vous êtes en train de faire cette nouvelle méthode de financement. Je pense que vous êtes en train de faire le même temps que vous êtes en train de faire le film. Est-ce que vous êtes en train de faire le même temps que vous êtes en train de faire le film Oui, je vais laisser Noah parler de ça. Yeah, so we're crowdfunding the project. So what that means is um, we're raising awareness about our project and about um, about the issue as we create the film. Um, so it sort of throws the traditional model of production of securing your funds, pre-production, production, post, and distribution um, by the wayside. We currently have over 150 donors. Uh, we just broke 17k at this point, and um, and it's what is it? It's uh, mid June 2011. So basically, it allows people to follow our progress while we're making the movie. So we're constantly posting clips of the new f footage we just shot. People can give us feedback and uh, you know post the new clips on their Facebook page, create more awareness that way, bring in some more donations. You know, at the end of the day, it allows us to create awareness while we're making the movie, as opposed to finishing the movie and hoping it finds an audience. Do you think that the political implications of your film might have uh, affected uh, negatively or positively the, the, the amount of funding you, you will receive uh, in this matter? In this manner, um, well, I mean, listen, anytime you're going to make a film about terrorism, there's going to be some skepticism, right? But our, our goal is just to appeal pe to people's sense of morality. You shouldn't hold someone in jail without charging them. We are doing that. So why are we doing that? We're trying to explore that. If you're interested in that subject, help us make this film. Help us explore that so we can learn about this issue. You know, as, I think as long as we focus on the basic ideas that a person has a right to defend themselves when they're accused of any crime, then people will stand up for that. And yeah, terrorism, you know, there are some implications that come with that. There are people that might be squeamish. But at the end of the day, we're not talking about the innocence or guilt of anybody. We're saying that if, if you're going to accuse somebody of a crime, you damn well better put up or shut up. Um, where can people go to, uh, to donate or to see, learn more about the project? Yeah, our website is secrettrial5, that's the number 5.com. And um, you know, visit our uh, main page. There's a little animated film on the main page that tells you everything you need to know about the project. And if you care about the issue, if you like what we're doing, then consider making a donation. Just uh, click our donate page. It'll, you can follow the steps. You can donate via PayPal, via credit card. You can mail in a check however you want. And I can't emphasize this enough that no donation is too small. Even you know, a five-dollar donation is a huge, huge help to us because. You know, that's going to be s your entire network of friends and family are going to know you did that, and they're going to want to know about the project. So, and even those of you who can't donate, you know, if you find that you like the project, get on your Facebook page, get on your Twitter, and spread the word to your friends and family. Uh, well, thanks for talking to us, uh, yeah. guys, and good luck with your film. Oh, thank you very much for having us. Hi, my name is Amar Walla, and this is a clip from my short film, The Good Son, which I made a couple of years ago while I was a film student in Toronto. The film is based on a true story about a 12-year-old boy who was asked to translate for his father as Canadian authorities interrogated him in their home. That boy's name is Akma Jabala, and he is the son of Mahmoud Jabala, a father of six who spent over five years in Canadian prison without ever being charged with a crime. How is that possible? You see, Mr. Jabala was held under something called a security certificate, which is a legal device by which the Canadian government can detain and or deport non-citizens that are deemed a threat to national security. However, what makes them controversial is that they allow for indefinite detention with no charges and secret evidence, meaning neither the accused nor their lawyers can see the evidence being used against them. Now, if you're like me, this sounds more like something out of a Kafka novel than an actual Canadian policy, but it's real. Over the past 10 years, five Muslim men have been held under these security certificates. These are men with wives, children, friends, parents, and after spending over 25 years in jail combined, none of them has ever been charged with a crime. These men are the Secret Trial Five. Now, as my short film had its festival run, audiences generally reacted like this. Yeah, I was very disturbed because I, I think as Canadians, we like to think, you know, that's the kind of thing that the Americans do. We don't do that sort of thing. I felt enraged and very, very angry. How dare this happen in my country? How dare this happen here? I was approached by angry audience members at every screening, all of whom wanted to know more about this family and more about security certificates. They couldn't believe this was happening in Canada. I realized then just how little people knew about this issue, and the best way to answer all their questions was to make a documentary. As soon as I told people my plan, several friends offered their help, so we formed a small crew eager to tell this story. There was just one question. How are we going to fund this project? And that's where you come in. We're going to fund this film through your contributions. 
This is called crowdfunding, and it basically means that we will use social media and word of mouth to help raise the money for this film through small donations while we raise awareness about this issue. Anyone, anywhere can become a producer of The Secret Trial 5 by donating to the production and spreading the word. On our site, secrettrial5.com, you can read more about security certificates, our subjects, and us, the filmmakers. You can also watch Amar's short film, The Good Son, and if at the end you'd like to know more, then click the donate button and help us make this film. Prove us right. Help us tell the story of The Secret Trial 5. Ligger de lige mellem. Har det. To skytter. Krav, krav, krav. Er du klar til at kigge op sammen med mig? Ja. ja. Mellem to compounds herude. Lavning. Er du klar? Ja. Derude. Kan du se det? Nej. Mellem to compounds. Lavning. Ja. Har du den? Mellem to compounds. Lavning. Målepas med rød røg. Målepas med rød røg. Målepas med rød røg. 500 meter. Skytter. Dyse er for ilden fri. Du kommer. Du kommer. This week on the show, we're reviewing Armadillo, a Danish war documentary in the vein of last year's uh, Restrepo. It follows a group of six, six or seven, maybe a few mm -hmm. more, soldiers uh, um, for six months in Afghanistan, um, just during their battles and uh, just uh, the in the camp. In between. And uh -huh. The downtime in between. The downtime, yeah, just like mm -hmm. hanging out, watching porn, a lot mm -hmm. of fun stuff. Um, Thomas, tell me what you thought of this song. I'm going to lay a knowledge bomb on you. Knowledge you may, bomb? You may not have known this stuff. Apparently, war plays havoc on people's psyches. And war is bad? Yes! No way! I didn't know that either! And it makes people desensitized to violence and death. Is this what this film is about? Yeah! Did you know this? <laughs> wow. <okay. laughs> That's what this film is about. It's about how war desensitizes people to violence and how it's really bad. And all the way through this movie, I just kept thinking, I know this. What are you telling me before that I haven't like already learned from a million war documentaries? The 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 thing that makes this one a bit different is that it it's there's no like talking heads or anything. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like that fly on the wall documentary where yeah. it's kind of if we were a character. Uh, as part of the war, we're like we're there during the battles, we're there during the downtime, but there's no, um, we're just seeing these characters. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I didn't feel like there was any, any like pull to 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 keep me interested. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, the thing, just the thing that really keeps hooking me or not hooking me is that a good documentary, I think, should show you something that you haven't seen before, or it should educate you. It should. Or at least in a different way. Yeah, exactly. It should be. It should show you something unique, even if it's just perspective. And all through the movie, I kept waiting for that hook to get here, and nothing kept coming. It just felt so familiar. Mm-hmm. Really. Um, and there was no. There was no like extra dramatization of it. No. It was just. It was just. So we're just there, and so I was just, just like, sort of why? Uh, yeah. It's just really plain. It was just so really. Just uh, uninspiring. Like, why I, I don't want to be in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. so putting me there and seeing that these people are doing things that I already know they're doing, mm -hmm. and I, I just had no interest in it. It just, why would I even want to be there? Why would I care? Yeah, exactly. And I hate to feel like a broken record, but I'm going to say the sa some of the same things I said about last week's movie, which is that it's a little too glossy, and the photography is really crisp and really well edited in a lot of places. And in a movie of this kind, you want it to be gritty. You want it to be sort of raw and dirty. And the whole time I was watching this, I kept thinking, there's like a mil like everything's being filmed from a million angles. The photography is very high quality. Everything's really like easy to follow and clean. And I just kept thinking, no, you need to, you need to give it a, a tangible quality. Otherwise, it just feels plain. It just feels, you know. Well, well, speaking of last week's mm -hmm. film, I, uh, we're also doing another war, uh, another mm -hmm. war film, but um, this time it's a documentary, and yeah. I, I even felt like there was even less connection with these characters, despite them being mm -hmm. real, uh, which was a problem with last week's film. Yeah. I felt it was even less this time, because you, you kind of know the characters, and they mm -hmm. introduce them at the beginning, but I, like you spend a bit of time with one and then with the other, and then it's just the whole battle yeah. scene, so you don't really know what's going on, but none of them, I felt, really 
stood out. No, or you don't get a sense for any of the know characters. Him even that well. Like at one point, somebody gets wounded, and you're just like, "Oh, really? Uh, who is he again?" And yeah, uh, there are a lot of similarities to uh, Restrepo. Oh yeah, for um, sure. Except at least in that film, you had that character of mm-hmm. Restrepo, which was like the yeah. center character, and you, and you knew him. In Armadillo, there you don't really know the characters. There's the one with the yeah. tattoo, and there's the one looks kind of young, man. And there's the something. one with the beard, and yeah. And then some other characters are introduced, and mm-hmm. they and there's a lot of talking about. War and it it just seems so just so ir- irrelevant or unimportant despite what the subject matter is. Yeah, exactly. It did cause a lot of controversy because uh, at one scene uh, in the film, which they don't actually even show that much, basically what happened is uh, there was a, a confrontation. Some uh, enemy combatants were killed, and these soldiers basically just sort of posed with the bodies, you know, like. Hey. Yay, we killed some people. Huzzah! But even that we've seen before. Yeah, and there was a huge public outcry because someone called their mother or something, and people were like, no, this is unethical. And you do get a little bit of the soldiers kind of responding to that, like, you know, they don't really know what's going on over here. Uh, this whole situation is playing with our minds and desensitizing us and do it, making us do things we wouldn't normally do, blah, 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 blah. But even even when that comes up, I was just so bored and unimpressed and uncaptivated. I think by because this. we're like so close to these people, we're so mm-hmm. on the inside, we don't get to see the actual big picture, which is actually yeah. the most important, the more important part. Yeah, precisely. And it, like if we were to, if we were that close, we'd want to know more, the more the character is better. But mm-hmm. but even that aspect of the film doesn't work. So I, I don't no. think I don't think it works very well at all. No, not really. I'm. Probably one of the least favorite movies I've I've done so far for this show. It just it was just in one ear out the other for me. Okay, mm-hmm. so we both uh, dislike this film. Yeah, it's uh, give it a miss. Playing at Cinema du Parc. If you want, if you want to, mm-hmm. uh, maybe you'll like it more it. than us. But but yeah. uh, we don't like war. <laughs> War's bad. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Good God, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't have any DVD picks for this week, but as an extra special treat, we have an extra review with our extra special guest, Mr. Ethan Vespi. Burger, transfer, power! Yo! Oh, shell! Stod du Ja, jottene kan bli så store. Det er bare jeg som har sett det. Du har et bergtrollrevir oppå Finnmarksvidda. Og så er det et bergtrollrevir på Hardangevidda. Jotunheimen. Og tre. Og så er det Dobre. Så nå må vi finne ut hvilket revir problemet ligger. Jotunheimen er nærmest. Så... Okay, welcome back. Now we are looking at a movie I've been wanting to do on the show for a long time. It's Troll Hunter, a Norwegian film. Uh, it's shot uh, found footage style. Um, what did you think of this film? Well, I have to say I quite liked it, and I think the biggest achievement of this film that makes it as good as it is is that it has a strong sense of subtlety. Yeah, for sure. I think that very much so with trolls, Mm -hmm. there's sort of an inherent goofiness to them. I don't know if it's because of the troll dolls phenomenon of the 1980s, but something like that, it's kind of like you see that, it's like, there's no way you can take this seriously. So the movie is smart in that it has a sense of humor, mm-hmm. but unlike, say, something like Reanimator or Evil Dead 2, the, s- the humor in this is very kind of dry, and mm-hmm. since there's the found footage element, it's like The Office in a way. Yeah. So it made when it kind of would veer from tone to tone, because it is genuinely scary at times, oh, yeah, it made definitely. that those tonal shifts not as jarring and very mm-hmm. successful. Mm-hmm. And also, on the other hand, I think the movie has very a subtle undercurrent of social commentary mm-hmm. throughout it. And because kind of you see they're hunting bears throughout the movie, and I think that's supposed to parallel how they're hunting these trolls. Mm-hmm. And you're supposed to f- kind of feel sympathy for them in a way. Yeah, for sure. It's it's funny that you mentioned the humor. Uh, a lot of the actors in this film are actually comedians by trade, but what I think really makes this movie is that they play it almost completely straight. Uh, the main character, the the titular troll hunter is uh, a well-known stand-up comedian uh, in his homeland. Wow. And he is completely deadpan in this movie and is being totally straight about it. And it really lends a lot of depth to the performance. 
uh, he's basically the centerpiece of this whole movie. He's kind of an, uh, a counterpoint to the like brave, you know, shining knight troll hunters of old. He's just uh, this government employee who's hunting trolls uh, on the part of, uh, of the government, and he's tired and cynical and world weary, and it's a total antidote to the the old kind of mythical uh, hero which is a really unique take on it and really makes the film for me. Yeah, and I mentioned that there's a social commentary aspect to the film mm -hmm. and also kind of the subtlety it has. And I think that works better for it because it's kind of a broader subject. Like I think of something like um, Starship Troopers, which mm -hmm. in a way is also trying to make you, because it's a uh, satire of fascism and yeah. Nazism, which is a very narrow subject. Mm -hmm. and so the humor is a little more broad and goofy because it can kind of satir satirize certain images, yeah, certain definitely. iconography of Nazis and whatnot. Whereas this, because it's a little, like I said, it's a little more general, the humor needs to be a little more subtle. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, yeah, that's another element of it I appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of the, the found footage style and what it lent to the movie? I, well, a pretty common complaint about found footage is that, like, oh, I was going to throw up. It gave me yeah. a headache. And this, I thought it was actually pretty stationary almost. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it's the, the people filming it are journalism students, so you get the sense that they know how to handle a camera. And it's funny because I keep thinking that that found footage genre is going to die out, like nothing I've seen, or I haven't seen anything new done with it in a while, so I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be gone in the next few years. And then I keep seeing something new with it. I saw Wreck a few years ago, a Spanish horror film, and I was like, okay, pretty good. And then I saw this, and yeah, it keeps renewing uh, my faith in it. But I don't know how much longer it's going to be able to do that, but we'll see what comes next, I guess. And you mentioned how the actors are a very key part in the success mm -hmm. of this film. And I think that's true. Like, you look at something like Cloverfield, which I think mm -hmm. is a pretty good movie. But yeah. very, the actors, they kind of are all kind of TV, CW yeah, stars. Definitely. And the dialogue and their arcs are very banal. Mm -hmm. And that kind of takes away a bit, even though the set pieces in that film are incredible. It yeah. takes away a bit from the drama. But here, it's very uh, of a piece in a way. Mm -hmm, for sure. So overall, you would recommend Troll Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, as would I. Go out, find this movie, watch it. Now, right away, or a troll will find you. They don't just live in Norway. We got him here. Well, you might be wondering why I'm eating a delicious burger this week. Well, it's the Food Film Festival at Cinema du Parc, the only place you'll be able to see Denis Villeneuve's short film, Next Floor, as well as other classic food films like Ang Lee's Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, or Peter Greenaway's The Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover. Go down to Cinema du Parc and have a burger while watching the food films. Well, that's our show for this week. I hope you enjoyed. Um, we're enjoying these burgers. I hope you join us next week where we talk about more movies and stuff. Have a week. Hi, and welcome to Fate Black. <laughs> come on. Yeah, come on. Think of something. <laughs> well, I'm on the other... Mm -hmm. No, but, like, your expression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep running, keep running. Good burger. Oh, wow. That's our show for this week. I hope you enjoyed. Join us next week, or eat shish to ook. I love you. <laughs>